Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. So today we're going to look at making video content for your Amazon brand on a budget. So what I will be doing is I'm going to use two video examples that I will break down that we use for Seller Sessions Live and uh, Branded by Women. Now, I know they're not product videos, but the essence remains the same of what you need in terms of putting a team together, all the other elements that involved in terms of the music uh, and all the <coughs> narration, copywriting, uh, in some cases, location shots and everything else. So starting with uh, a few statistics, in 2019, video content was to account for 8% of all consumer internet traffic. Social media video games, uh, sorry, social media video generated 1,200% more shares compared with images and text combined. 87% of online marketers use video content. The volume of mobile, uh, mobile video consumption increases 100% each year. So this is some of the key reasons that we need to make sure that we are generating video content, whether that's brand events, whether you're a service-based business, it doesn't matter. But video is obviously playing a key role. So some of the key aspects of any video content is you've got to look at who is your target market, where are you getting the footage from? Is this uh, pre-recorded footage? Are you using uh, websites for free license, royalty-free? Are you buying stock? Uh, are you, you know, creating this from scratch, right? We're also going to look at the importance of music and the role that it plays. Uh, voiceovers, our tone of voice, cadence and stuff is very important. And I'm a great believer that you should never use a professional voiceover person. And I'll get into that in a little while. We're also going to cover the resources. So Effectively, even though part of this uh, podcast will be visual as well, for those who's listening back on the replay of the podcast, I'll put the YouTube link in there so you can get an opportunity to see the visual side of what we're going through at the moment. The So the resources, where you get your music from, uh, video templates, and, of course, things like effects and stuff that you're using. Now, what else is important is, is that we work as – in our Amazon business, and often we want to try and do everything ourselves. We do a bit of this, bit of that, and and we have VAs doing this, that, and the other. But it's really important if you want to try and get yourself uh, a, a quite a good quality video, you don't need to spend a huge amount of money. So generally, on you know on your team, we're looking at a, a creative person who's going to play the role of the director, stroke producer. A really key person as well is a mix engineer. OK, so someone who's going to be in charge of the music side of things, the copywriting. And again, who in terms of the copywriting, who's going to deliver on the narration side of things? Um, let's break this down a little bit further. What should your video content contain? Well, you need to get your message across. Exactly. What are you offering? Uh, then the emotional hook where you're using music and words, and then you want to be able to bring this, everything together into a climax and closing in terms of making a sell or getting your message across. So first things first, I'm just going to bring up the, we're going to do a, a teardown of the Seller Sessions live video. I'm going to go through all the different elements in there. This is all stuff that you can do for, for more on like me, you can sit down and put this stuff together and build a team, so can you. Right, okay, let me just take this back to the beginning. What I'll do is I'm going to keep stop starting it because I think it's important to get it across, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll play it all the way through. Seller Sessions Live is an annual event where we bring in the world's best Amazon educators. This is a one-day affair of advanced-level PPC, ranking techniques, and the latest changes in the A9 algorithm. Sellers fly in from around the world, giving them the edge over the competition when it comes to innovating on Amazon. None of the content is streamed nor accessible to non-delegates, keeping exclusive to the chosen few. We put networking content and the community front and centre, as we have a no-nonsense approach to your education. It is designed for smart sellers running real businesses in a leisure-style environment where you can learn and get feedback in real time. It's a lot of information just packed into one day. Pretty value packed in terms of the actual content presentation. Uh, yeah, no, it's really good. 
the tactics and strategies and hacks that you learn are not going to take you very far if you don't really look to add more value to the customer. Okay, so played that all the way through. I was going to break it down, but I'm going to go back step by step. So let's just take it back. So you've watched the whole thing. I think it's, what, 1 minute 24. Now, from that video, we sold out seller sessions within three weeks. Doesn't mean it's all down to the video, but I definitely feel that the video played its role. We also got a previous video that we we made and completely scrapped. Now, the intent here with everything that we do is, I uh, mentioned earlier, on the importance of having a good audio engineer. So the straight away, the first thing that you get, whether you enjoy this or not, is that we're trying to do like an audit, you know, an auditory assault on your ears. So the first thing that you come through is how tough the drums are, right? So you've got the heavy drums. Seller Sessions Live is an annual event where we bring in the world's best Amazon Edge. And then what's happened, they're running a plugin. My voice takes on two parts which run through a plugin. The intent there as well is because we're using like a harmonic, what's called harmonic distortion. So we're using the distortion pedal there to bring that energy in. Now, with heavy drums like this, this is why it's important. If you notice with film music, if you want to evoke a motion in one of those big blockbusters, the first thing that they, they go to is the orchestra. It's a given every single time because the science is there on a biological level. We react to stuff like that. We react to the motion. We react to the cinematography, the movement on screen and everything else. So what you've got to look at is when you're creating something. Now, this isn't going to be good for a spatula. This is very intentful in terms of what we try to achieve with with Seller Sessions Live and how we get it across. Why do I come in with big drums like this where you see most of uh, conferences when they do more like that corporate videos? There's loads of guys and girls walking around in suits eating cheese on sticks and, and it's plinky plonky music. Now, when we do seller sessions, I want some fucking anarchy. I want us like we work hard all week, right? You come to the event, hardcore content. And then after, if you're up for it, we go partying hard as well. And that's what I want to reflect in there as well. And so using these heavy drums is part of the emotive thing is grabbing the attention, whether you like that or not. You know, most people said to me when I um, I put this video out is that they had to turn their headphones and stuff down. Could it just the impact there? But it did uh, get uh, people's attention. You know, whether that is right or in, in the wrong way. So music plays a massive, important role in terms of how it comes across to people and where the space is as well. So if we look quickly again. Decayers. This is a one day affair of a vibe. So whilst I'm narrating, you've also got the text going and changing across the screen. There has to be congruency with what the person is narrating and what flashes up on the screen. You need to effectively make sure that the, the congruency is there together. So it's operation in sync because the, my, the, 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 the person that's looking at this, they're, they're using their eyes, they're sucking in information via their eyes. They're getting the, the, the assault on their ears as well. And they want to see there's a line of congruency between the two to, to obviously uh, process this information. Another reason why you often feel, hear uh, big tribal drums and not much going on is because of the frequency range. So the human is called the Nyquist theorem. The human hearing range is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Anything above 20 kilohertz, then it's going to be dogs and cats who's going to hear what's up there. But we hear in between that range. Within that frequency range, instruments have to sit. Each instrument, a kick drum, a snare drum, uh, a bass, the voice, it has a frequency range that it has to sit in. So effectively, what we're trying to do is we're using the bottom end frequency from 50 hertz up to, say, 500 hertz. That core range is the bottom end um, where we're applying that to, to, to make sure you get the most impact. But at the same time, it isn't cluttered with other instruments in there. 
the drums are allowed to come through and then the vocal that sits on top, let's just say that starts at 250 hertz and goes up to 1.5 kilohertz. That's sitting in the top of the range there. So what happens is, getting I'm getting geeky now about it, but what happens is that if you leave lots of space, within that space, when you come to master it, the, mar the final process of mixing down, you can make it really, really loud. Generally, what happens is if people make music and there's got too many instruments and parts that are going on within that music, it takes up too much of the frequency range. So when it's compressed, mixed and EQ, it doesn't sound louder and it sounds too busy because they're all fighting for the same space, especially if they've not been mixed properly. So when it comes to using music for stuff and especially when you want to get the impact of power is very important that you use stripped down versions of everything and um it's the source material matters the most so like if someone badly records a kick drum and snare you can't polish a turd as we called it in the music industry you're better off re-recording it again so let's just quickly carry on level ppc ranking techniques and the latest changes in the a9 algorithm Sellers flying from around the world, giving them the edge over the competition when it comes to innovating on Amazon. Okay, so this is another part to, to take into consideration. The quality of, we really had barely any footage. And if you've noticed so far, there's been a lot of black and white shots and a lot of stills in there because we yet to use the photography that was available because the 15, 16 hours worth of content from two different videos uh, was really poor. The lighting was really poor in there, and there was barely anything that could be usable in terms of trying to make a, a half decent production on the video. None of the content is streamed nor accessible to non delegates, keeping exclusive to the chosen few. We put networking content and the community front and center as we have a no nonsense approach to your education. It is designed for smart sellers running real businesses in a leisure style environment where you can learn and get feedback in real time. It's a lot of Okay, so the bit that's coming into next is what's called a vox pop. In in terms of TV and radio, it's where an interviewer goes around and interviews people and asks them the same set of questions. So we're able to rescue some of this footage here that was took place in the lunch hour uh, within seller sessions. Information just packed into one day. Pretty value packed in terms of the actual content presentation. Uh what you notice here is very struggling with the background. We had to do some mixing and EQing in terms of bringing, dulling down the background noise, but we've done our best to, to try and achieve that. But as you can hear, it kind of fits in. But as I break these elements down individually, you can probably start to pinpoint and tune in to different areas of the sound. Yeah, no, it's doing really good. All the tactics and strategies and hacks that you learn are not going to take you very far if you don't really look to add more value to the customer. Okay, so take that back again. So it comes about down to dynamic range. We have the heavy drums that are coming in. It goes into what's called a breakdown area. The Vox Pops come into play. We change things up slightly, right? I just take this back. You can hear Lee Rand's voice. And then what we're trying to do is create more impact from that dynamic range of when the drums come uh, crashing back It's not going to take you very far if you don't really look to add more value to the customer. Okay, so that took, I think we spent, in terms of the post-editing and production, again, it's not a super high-resolution video because we had to work with pretty crappy footage. The difference really came down to the engineer and how we were able to manipulate the music and edit and produce that. So we'll be able to put the effects and stuff on my voice. Now, I haven't got the greatest voice in the world, but I suppose it's distinctive for the audience that we have from the podcast, they recognize my voice. Now, if I go onto Fiverr and go and use a voiceover 
person to do it and it sounds really slick it's going to sound terrible and inauthentic on top of that music this is why i encourage people never to use the voiceover person because they sound like a voiceover person there's no authenticity there so even if you don't like your own voice but you are the um let's just say you are the face of your company let's just say i'm alongside now with isabella and and uh, of course sharon with the three of us are the face of the podcast but when this was done I was the face of the podcast, therefore, Seller Sessions Live. It didn't make sense to get an American female or male guy, a woman to do the voiceover. So it's really important when you're doing your products is definitely make sure that if someone's going to do the, the, the voiceover, it needs to come across as authentic. So there's the, the kind of breakdown of if we just bring it back a little bit in here, where I just do it without putting the music on. So you can see we, we're we using options in terms of black and white. There's color treatments on the imagery. You can see the imagery. It's not great content like in terms of the production values. You can see the, this is the overlay here. This text here has come from the, um, uh, what's it called, the feedback forms. So, so when we send out feedback forms post-event, we're able to use this. It's the same thing when you're doing a product video, you're going to be using your uh, your Amazon reviews and your feedback and so any awards that you've won for your for your business. All of this stuff here, what you're seeing here, this is uh, the templates. So I'll go on to the marketplace in a minute. I will do that bit towards the end. But effectively what this is, is you can buy, buy templates from Invata, I think it's called. It's like... 30 quid a month, $30 a month uh, in terms of having a subscription or you can pay in terms of a license as, as a one-off fee. But interestingly, to just go back to like we completely scrapped this, uh, not scrapped this one, we scrapped the one I'm going to play before. So the first version of Seller Sessions Live video never made it out the gate because I, you've got to get a feeling for your products, right? Like you get, for, sorry, like you've got a feeling for your product. You must have a feeling for when you do something, it's right. I always go with my gut on everything. Every time I go against it, then I know. Because effectively what we did, we produced a video and it was like I looked at it and I listened to it. And even though we worked on that for a number of hours, I'm like, this is shit. We need to start again. And so this is the previous one. So again, with this is one where we're going to use orchestral music. Another thing as well is when you're using these kind of effects um, that overwrite on the text, like it breaks up like matrix style screens, that kind of those kind of effects, you can overdo them. And we overdone it and overcooked it on this one. But I'll, I'll play this one through. Yeah. So, I mean, if we go back here, it's just, you know, and it, it's a bit pretentious. I mean, I think the other one we get away with because it's a bit more rock and roll, a bit more edgy and stuff. I think this one, we've used too much of the template and we overcooked it. It was like too orchestral. It, like it lent to too much the other way. So I think it's important that you get a real feel for when you're putting these together. It's not just rely on the template. So you can see pretty much the, uh, the whole thing is being utilized around the template, whereas the other one we've used the template, but it's much more dynamic. Again, music plays a big role. If someone's, you know, bringing, you've got like breakdowns and the drums come crashing back in, what kind of sound effects and production levels that you have on the music will 
be sufficient in some areas of covering the uh, carrying imperfections elsewhere. So next one I'm going to bring up is the most recent branded by women. You'll see a distinct difference between this one because 90% of the content in that is done in 4K. And it was very intent is that before we produced the video was to go out and get as much 4K video footage as possible because that helps with those leanings in terms to making it more uh, seemed kind of high level production. Branded by Women is back, bigger and louder than before. Packed with 30 sessions taught by women who are leading the way in e-commerce, this event focuses on the vision, strategy and tactics needed to get you unstuck and moving to the next level. has seen a growth in online shopping like never before. It had the highest year-on-year -year growth ever and shows no signs of slowing down. Whether you are just getting started, already own an e-commerce business, or are gearing up for an exit, the Branded by Women speakers will share stories, teach strategies, and give tips for achieving success. Expand your knowledge, be inspired, and let's achieve together. Okay, so for me, again, it's in the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So that depend whether you like it or not. Again, notice with the music, very tribal for the sisterhood. The drums are very much stripped down. You can hear Michelle Venton's voice on top there. But again, we add like, yeah, side B says mixing black and white with color footage seems to work nicely. The the thing is with Michelle, we had to record Michelle over Zoom. So in order for me to play back the music, because she doesn't have a, a studio set up and my mobile engineer couldn't get over to her house because we're in the middle of the COVID, we had to make use. So there are going to come times where the recording quality, like we discussed earlier on, as much as you want it high quality, if you can get into a booth, into a recording studio and record there where they're using good mics and the, the rooms are acoustically treated and so you want a, a more of a dead sound so you can control it. When, when you record a vocal, you want it to be not dry, but you want as less reflection in the sound as possible because you can always add delays and effects and stuff like reverb after naturally, but it all comes back down to the source. So if you listen, I'll just quickly play a part of it again. Listen to Michelle's voice again. And louder than before. Packed with 30 sessions taught by women who are leading the way in e-commerce, this event... For so that so Michelle's voice is being stretched out across the track because of the quality it was quite kind of thin. So it wasn't recorded. Uh, so it wasn't like a, a, a WAV or a, an A file. This is like a M, MP3 kind of quality level. Um, so effectively, you, the effect that had to go over the top of that was to kind of cover some of the imperfections. And there was a bit of sibilance where you get from the S's. When when someone speaks, it starts to, and at a high frequency, about two and a two and a half K, the sibilance there, you get that S kind of sound, makes it very uh, difficult for people to tune in. It can be kind of awkward. So you'd run them through a series of uh, like filters and effects and stuff, depending on what the engineer to use, just to clean that sound up a bit. The other thing as well, this is a women's conference. There is no way I'm going to sit there and write the treatment for it. Although I'll put the teams and stuff together, Michelle came up with the content in terms of her narration because she knows who her market is. She knows who she is speaking to. So it goes back to importance of when you're building teams, you park your ego at the door and you make sure that you've got the right people in the right seats. It's the same with the narration over the top. It's just come through here. You know, join 30 of the most successful women and speakers. Let's just kick in here. We sat down and McLean and Warren done the, the copywriting on this. Uh, and then we give a copy to Michelle because with Michelle, she has to make sure that is there congruency with what I'm saying and the visual of the footage? So let's just quickly go through that together and just one more time watch it through. Branded by Women is back, bigger and louder than before. Packed with 30 sessions taught by women who are leading the way in e-commerce, this event focuses on the vision, strategy and tactics needed to get you unstuck. Okay, so three days of content, three days of And moving to the next level. Three days of fire. Definitely something that I wouldn't write, but I shouldn't be writing that because I'm not the target audience. So 
So join 30 plus of the most successful women speakers. 2020. All under one roof. It's seen growth in online shopping like never before. It had the highest year on year growth ever and shows no signs of slowing down. Whether you are just getting started, already own an e-commerce business or are gearing up for an exit, the Branded by Women speakers will share stories, teach strategies and give tips for achieving success. Expand your knowledge, be inspired and let's achieve together. So what I'm going to bring up now is the marketplace that I use for all of the assets. We'll go through and we'll quickly do a demo going through that. It's very straightforward. So you want to find what kind of templates you want to use, whether you're, you know, depend on the software that your um, video editor has. And then importantly as well is the, the kind of music. So let me just share Chrome tab. All right, so this is, um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it from here. So if, effectively, this is my favorites for Invato Market. And if I play the first one. Yeah, so that's the Seller Sessions Live. And you can hear the audio jungle sample behind it. Uh, I'm not sure if we use this template, but this gives you an example. So it gives you something visually to work with, whether you're using stills or you're using um, actual video footage. This one here. So that's Branded by Women. That's number two. This one wasn't used, but effectively we will select him for the right type of music that is relevant. Uh, this here. Yeah, so we use that theme as part of uh, Branded by Women 2. Let's have a look at this one. Nope, didn't use that one. What's this here? Nope, didn't use that either. So these are the saving as your favorites, but it's very straightforward. You just go in and if I just go back to here and then type in here, let's just do film music, for instance. So if you want to have something that's much more orchestral, you can then filter these down by bestsellers, newest, best rated, trending, etc. Uh, then you can go down like you might not want to take music that are top sellers or bestsellers because that means that music is just being utilized everywhere. Uh, and people obviously want to be original. We can do by pricing. Um, then the type of tempo, again, something like uh, tempo is something that we didn't really cover, which plays an important role in terms of what kind of impacts that you want. Some people use uh, like down tempo music because the message they're trying to convey may be more headed towards lingerie or it may be headed towards jewelry and stuff. So you're not necessarily going to go every type of track. You're going to go balls out to the wall and, and do, you know, uh, tribal music like what I do. But the reason I use the tribal thing because I understand that science behind it and what makes people move. And they, those tracks are, are those type of tracks with minimal drums and just a voice over top has been proven over and over again. But then when you look at mainstream um, TV and uh uh, ads on TV, it's the, a lot of the music is kind of plinky plonky. So it's really going to come down to the type of products that you are going to have. Uh, let me just go back. So let's go into templates. Here we go. That's web theme and templates. Sorry, when you want to go to video. There we go. All right. So the options you've got here is just go drop down elements, logo strings, openers, uh, titles. So you are not limited to just using one um, template. Some people use four or five. You know, like as I said, there's certain things that work as openers, like what you get in uh, the trailers for movies and stuff. So you might only have like a, a 15 second area where you've got some drums building up, but then it can go into another musical piece, another composition. And, you know, you can use 
uh, logo strings. You can use different items within there in terms of effects. But that's where you'll sit down with your video editor to go through this stuff. Uh, elements, infographics, broadcast uh, packages. Then for art, so you've got Premiere Pro, you've got After Effects. So it depends on what software is being utilized and whether you're doing any animation as well. Um, but, you know, again, you've got stock footage. There's just so much stuff to go through, but he's, he's trying to sit down and working out, well, what do I need? And this is where you've got to kind of get a clear image of what you're trying to get. I knew what I wanted to get across with Seller Sessions Live. It was very important that we wasn't the cheese on sticks wearing suits conference. We wanted to make sure there's a bit of anarchy in there, a bit of, you know, for a better word for it, a bit of naughtiness, if you like. We wanted to make sure you do your education in the day. We're in a in a um, lecture style environment. We're very serious about our business, but we're also very serious about our networking and partying after. And I wanted to reflect that. And that's the bit that you need to to kind of go into. And that's going to help you choose the type of music that you want. And I find that a good place to start is with the music because of being formula being a, a recording engineer and producer, there's a good place to get inspiration for a piece. So you might just go through and start doing searches on music and you'll find something that resonates with that. When you when that resonates with you, then you start to write a brief around it. That's when you bring in the video editor. So in terms of the costs for putting these together, Let's just say your copyright is going to cost you 100 to 200 bucks, depends on how much needs to be taken place then. You've got to work out whether you're going to be the voiceover or you're bringing in a professional or a friend or an influencer or whoever it is to voice over on the video. Then, again, the mix engineer is going to cost you anywhere between 25 to 50 bucks an hour, allow three to six hours, depending if they're doing any post-production. A video editor, a good one, is going to cost you 20 bucks. A shit one's going to cost you $2 to $7. Um, licenses for music and templates are, are, are very minimal. You know, obviously you've got commercial licenses. So you're ranging from $30 up to maybe $250, $300. It depends on what it is. Not everyone goes for the full commercial. So I would say putting a video like this together, uh, depending – on where you sit and how much time you invest in the video because it's the hours that per hour that stacks up. I think you're looking anywhere between $700 and $900. You can do it a lot cheaper, um, but it depends on where you want to give up on the quality. The other thing you've got to look at is, well, where do I get original content from? That's the toughest part is that if you've been given footage or you can use stock imagery and, and buy that, that's fine. Uh, then it really comes down to the music, the templates, the narration and everything else to put that whole thing together. But um, probably the best way to get free footage is to give your product away and get to do get people to do unboxings and ask them to send the raw files because most of these people are going to have a professional setup anyway. And that could be the start point of where you can, you know, even if you pay them $100, they've done a review of the product anyway. They're doing an unboxing. See what other vi video footage that they've got there. Then you can go to the different marketplaces and then you can add uh, various different options. You know when you can add different scenes. So let's just say, I don't know, let's just say you are selling the spatulas, okay? But you want to take a shot from the the unboxing of these spatulas that is sitting on the side to um, a, a, a mum and daughter or father and daughter or father and son in the kitchen and they're off to to make some food. They're the other side and that's part of the cut. So then you start to introduce those and if you can get the colour coordination right or the colour mixing, I'm not sure the technical term, you can get them to blend together. It looks like they're part of the same video. Then once you start to add in the incidental music, if it's incidental or it's overpowering, not overpowering, but it's of that balance, and then you add in the voiceover, before you know it, you started to put something together on a relatively cheap uh, budget. So hopefully that was helpful today. There's quite a lot of information there to um to cover but i think we pretty much covered it as i said invato just go to that marketplace you everything you need there putting the team together 
just go to one of these VA places, right? So I think when I I've got a team now, but back in the you know two or three years ago, I would go to um, Nate Nathan Free Up. So for instance, go to Free Up and say I need a copywriter, I need a video editor. Um, and I don't know, need uh, a voiceover person. Let's just say that you're going to go for a voiceover and say, I've got a test budget of $400. And then you just hire those people to find out whether they're going to be good enough for the job. They're also going to be um, handpicked by the agency. So it saves you on the job. I like to start, if I'm testing new products, I like to use one of the VA agencies to say, all right, is there any, can I get some social proof within this idea? Regardless if it's video or not, who do I need? And then I'll put a small team together on a small budget. And if it's got some legs, then I'll move forward with that. So, again, not going to be very difficult. Very good. What you need is someone who's good with sound. Check their, the music that they get. Listen through different systems, not just shitty headphones in the office and stuff, because it won't get, you won't get the full production value of whether their their quality there is any good. Make sure if you've got a good decent uh, system in your car, etc., uh, or a, a, a hi-fi setup of some kind of with high fidelity. Um, then ask the video editor to produce some work, some jobs. The problem you're going to get with uh, video editors, it's the same with web developers and stuff. You have to give them direction. You can't just say to them, here's a load of footage, make me some magic. You've got to take control of the whole situation. You've got to know, even if it's just in your mind and you've got different people plotting it out on paper and you're not storyboarding the whole thing out, it's important that you know what an end product should look like and it's your job to articulate that to them. So uh, that's it from me today. I'll be back here again tomorrow. I've got a very interesting show. Uh, I'll put the thumbnail up tomorrow. For those listening back on the podcast, I'll drop this link into the show notes so you can follow the video along from here. Uh, just quickly say hi to everyone before we go. Vincenzo, hey, Danny. Nia is here, says hello. Facebook user says hi. Uh, Facebook user says, are you talking about a Kindle book? Nope, this one's about video. Yaro says, hi, Danny. Sai B says, base in your face, I need a ticket. We can talk about that, son. Daniel says, hi, everyone. Uh, so again, mixing black and white with color footage works nicely. This is cool. All these small nuances in the sound that can really make up the visual pops. Exactly. It's very important that when you break this down component by component, and you engineer each of those components and you bring it together to the composite whole. That is where you make the difference when you've got shitty footage and you use a little bit of ingenuity and workarounds to make sure that you can get something off half decent. Uh, I guess you've got to consider it being viewed on a PC or a phone and what speakers will be used. Again, Sight, so you're right. That's why it's when you're mixing stuff, you need to listen on good stereos and poor stereo systems as well. The key thing is, does it have impact as it comes across? Yara says, good info. Uh, Trevor says, nice job, Danny. Uh, Tony says, hi, Danny. And we've got uh, Tushar. Charlie uh, says, thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, Danny, for the valuable information. Cool. Hope you enjoyed that today, guys. Take care of yourself and your family. Much love, and I'll be back here same time tomorrow.